When she first gave me the shoes to hold in my hands, I felt delight, a sense of joy, the fact that she had kept hold of them all these years. My first pair of walking shoes, I held them in the palm of my hand. They were that small, pale, dusty blue with scuff marks around the front and a tiny silver buckle to fasten around the bridge of the foot. I held them up to the light and memories flooded back. Picking up leaves in the old churchyard, flaming autumn colors swirling, and a crisp crunch of parched leaves crinkling as I stamped my tiny feet through them. Laughter ringing through the air, the sweep of blue sky swirling overhead, warm hands wrapping around me like a blanket safety. And then they fade. Fade like an old photograph. Seeping slowly away. Trickling over the edges of my mind and down into the darkness of time. And then they were gone. It was the emptiness that hit me, punched to the gut. The empty weight of those shoes in the palm of my hands. Tiny shoes that used to be filled with chubby feet, just learning to walk, tottering, learning how the world works. Tiny shoes once filled with dreams. No, nothing, just this awful emptiness. And that's what made me think of you. I hadn't meant to, I mean, it was supposed to be a nice thing. She was showing me how much she cared, how much they meant to her. I've kept my first pair of shoes all these years. 48 years. Her own memories folded away inside those drawers like long lost love letters. Old drawings scrawled by chubby fists that had once grasped brightly colored crayons. Birthday cards made from pieces of scrap paper, glittered hearts and messy glue. And even the tiny plastic bracelets stamped with my name and the date I was born. A collection of memories piled inside a drawer under the bed. Memories of motherhood. And that was the problem. Memories of motherhood. Those shoes held lightly in the palm of my hand, although they had once belonged to me, made me think only of you. The lack of you. The emptiness inside those shoes. The emptiness inside me. And I looked at them, and I tried to smile to show her I appreciated them. And I did. I really did. It's just... Oh. Look at me. Middle-aged. String of mistakes behind me. Strung together like... Dirty linen hanging on a washing line. Nothing to show from any of it, only heartbreak, failure, misery. And 
I think of you. How you would have looked in a pair of shoes just like these. Scuffed and tatty because of the adventures you've been on. Whirling your way through the seasons like a dandelion puff that twirls just in front of me. Suspended on a breath. Only to sweep away with the spring breeze. And I can't catch hold of you no matter how hard I run. No matter how hard I try. I try to grasp hold of you, of your hand, but I can't. I can't catch hold of you. I can't. You hover on the vestiges of my vision. A soft shimmer. As if I could only turn the right way at the right time, I would see you. are gone. And so it goes on. Our endless game of peekaboo. A game that will last a lifetime. My lifetime. I didn't know there was an ache this deep. This bone deep. It lies so deep inside me, I can't find where it hides. I can't cut it out of me. It's just an empty hollowness somewhere at the heart of me. Grief so visceral, so real. I feel that if I start to cry, I will begin to break, fracture, shatter like a piece of glass. Shard of ice splintering away from a glacier. A suspended moment in time, just before an avalanche. Frozen in time. I am frozen. I feel empty, hollow, an empty house with all the shutters down, no lights on, just dusty, vacant, empty rooms. I often wonder if someone were to shout into me with their words just echo around the empty chambers of my heart, bouncing off the bones of my ribcage. Are you the reason why? I ache for you. And I want you to know, I want you to know that I ache for you. I'm always missing a piece, always will be. Do you know that? I don't talk to you so easily, as if you were here, as if you were real. Are you? Are you here somewhere and I just can't see you? How sad is life? I ache to be your mother. To wrap you in my arms and keep you safe. Smell your hair, 
soft is down, tickling the tips of my nostrils to inhale the very essence of you. To sit by your bedside in the shadowy darkness and tell you stories. Stories that will keep the monsters away. Tell you to be brave, to fight back, because the monsters are real. They are as real as you and me. The things I let him do to me. I wanted you, you know? I tried my best to hold on. Even though I knew I was breaking, I held on because I wanted you. I wanted something beautiful to be born from something so ugly, so rotten. Like the tiny blue flower in a dream I had years ago. A stinking pile of rubbish rose up before me. Festering, rotten, fetid. But then, halfway up, this bright blue flower poked its head out from amongst all that dirt, all that rock. It's tiny, fragile, and precious like a piece of heaven. It stood out from that pile of dirt and it gave me hope. Hope that even through pain, something beautiful can emerge. A dream stayed with me my whole life. Beauty grown from ugliness, from filth. And you were that dream for me. You and only you. I hung on and hung on through the most unimaginable pain. Even though I could feel myself splitting fraying at the edges, seams coming undone, stitch by sorry stitch. I held on. I clasped that dream of you to my chest and I kept holding on, fingers grasping the cliff edges, refusing to let go even though I knew. out my chest and between my ribs there's only grief. Unpalatable grief. Bottomless. Unlevel grief. With you my forever grief.
dream I will carry to my grave. And his gray hairs sprout from amongst my hair and lines etch their way slowly across the page of my face. I will carry you. I will carry you with me in my heart until the day in which it fails to beat any longer. Until one day stops. And then Hush blossom trees. You curled against me like a firm tip, wrapped in each other's arms, safe. Rock you gently to sleep. Brush moon leaves through your 